Whenever I make law form tutorial videos or start a new programming tutorial series, I get feedback from viewers saying that they prefer I include a short 10 to 15 minute videos that show you how to go from 0 to 1 in the most condensed essentials only format. Basically how to get started, nothing more than that. Since I'm planning on going deep into PyTorch Vision in the next few weeks, I thought I'd start with a short video that shows you how to get started with PyTorch Vision, 10 to 15 minutes straight to the point. You will have to start by googling for some nice images to use and we use a pre-trained computer vision model in PyTorch to predict the class of the image. Now I'm living in Indonesia so I want to use pictures of animals that are native to Indonesia. If I just did a quick google search, type in Indonesian native animals, I get a few animals, Komodo dragon, orangutan, so I'm gonna stick with these two. Also how could you not? If you search for orangutan, they look absolutely adorable. And look at this baby. How cute is this? Now I want to say, depending on the pre-trained model, you might not have a very precise classification because either the model was not exposed to images of Komodo dragons specifically that, or it was not exposed to images of orangutans, or that maybe the model was exposed to them but they were labeled as just a, a bigger group of like lizards or giant lizards or monitor lizards, or, or instead of apes you get, uh, instead of orangutans you get apes or you get uh, gorillas and chimpanzees and stuff. So you might not get a very precise classification, but I'll be using ResNet, so while it might be challenging, I'm counting on it to make the distinction between orangutans and gorillas and chimpanzees and gibbons and bonobo, etc. Basically just adding a layer of challenge beyond just predicting that the image contains animals of an ape. If you've never heard of the Komodo dragon or the orangutan, do a quick Google search and maybe put Indonesia on your bucket list for a future trip. And once you've found some sweet images, refer to the first video in my PyTorch GPU series to see how to get PyTorch and Torch Vision installed with GPU enabled on your computer. That's the only other dependency you need. You can follow along with this video just fine. Let's go ahead and create a Python script or Jupyter Notebook. I'm gonna say Vision 101. And hit Control B to hide the sidebar now. And now let's start off by importing models from Torch Vision and just maybe print the available models. And at this point, if you watch the first video in the PyTorch Deep Learning series on my YouTube channel, or if you watch a few of them from the uh, PyTorch Deep Learning uh, playlist, and this should come as no surprise, you should be able to do something like import Torch. Because we're really trying to infer the animal in the image, we're going to use the Torch Vision module. So we can just bring that in as well. So from Torch Vision, import models. Let's run all of that. Okay, so the import statements work. Let's print out all of the models in that. So let's say, dear models. So we're just really printing out the available models. It says output exceeds the size limit. You could change the size limit if you want, but this is good enough. Just let me walk you through this really quickly, right? So all the capitalized names here, they refer to Python classes that implement a number of popular models. And they differ in the architecture which is really a fancy way of saying that they have different arrangement in the operations. The way they set up the input layer, the hidden neurons layer, and then the output layer, they have different arrangements to that. Some of them are a lot deeper. For example, AlexNet is not really deep uh, compared to ResNet or something else at the bottom. You see there's the LayNet and stuff. So whenever you see capitalized names, they refer to classes, right? And these lowercase names are really just instances, right? They're just convenience functions that return models instantiated from these classes sometimes with different parameter set. So if you see something like white ResNet 101 underscore 2, 101 is really just telling you that it has 101 layers. So if I want to use ResNet, I could use ResNet with 101 layers. If I use ResNet 50, it has 50 layers and 18 would be 18 layers and so on and so forth. These are all really just convenience function. You could choose not to use them and just sort of instantiate your own instance from the classes, that's fine. But uh, we're going to be using ResNet architecture, so we don't need to import all of these models. What we want to do is I'm going to import very specifically what I want. Really just a quick get started guide so don't have to go through all of the different options here. I'm going to use this red net, rest net. And if you look at my screen, it would try to complete that for you, giving you a list of choices here. So you have a 101, 101, 152, 1834. So that's kind of what I'm saying here is if you want a rest net with 101 layers, so residual network with 101 layers, then just choose rest net 101. That's actually what I'm going to be using. I also want to bring in the weights, the pre-trained weights. So I'm going to say rest net. 101 weights. So we don't need to print the models anymore. Take that away. And a quick recap here, right? So when we import ResNet 101, we're really just calling an instance of this class, of the ResNet class 101 with 101 layers. ResNet 18 has 18 layers, for example. So when you hear somebody say that they have a trained newer network versus an untrained newer network, they're talking about the weights of the newer network. Right, the difference between a trained neural network and an untrained neural network, both have the same architecture, is that the trained neural networks really contains the weights Right? Instead of all the uninitialized weights, zero or, or null, they, they actually been trained on, so they actually contain weights. And the weights are the numbers that are multiplied by the inputs to the neural network to produce an output. 
So these weights are what the neural network learns, right? The weights are what we're trying to optimize. When we have a trained neural network, we are talking about a neural network with weights that have been optimized to produce the output that we want. Now, I told you earlier that I'm bringing these weights in because I want to use a pre-trained model. Now, what do we mean by a pre-trained model? When somebody says that they use a pre-trained model, they're really talking about a model that has been trained on a large data set and they're using the weights from that model as the starting point for their own training. Maybe they're using the model as is, maybe they're, doing it with the, maybe they're just using the model without any training. They could also be using it as a starting point and then incrementally update the weights. Now, in the case of the REST Net 101, there are 44.5 million weights or parameters. So when we're loading it in, instead of training our own, we're saving a lot of time. So to load the weights in, let's go ahead and just say weights, create a variable here, and we're going to say restnet weights. There is the image net uh, v1, v2, but I'm going to use the default. Now at this point, you may be tempted to just do something like output and say, oh, restnet 101, and just put in your image. And you're thinking in the right direction, but not quite yet, right? So you're almost ready to do this, but not quite yet. Why? Because you need to do a little bit of pre-processing. The ResNet 101 model, it expects a couple of things. It expects this image to be a 224 times 224 um, image. Actually, technically, it doesn't expect it to be an image. It expects it to be a tensor, to be normalized. And normalized means that the image is scaled so that the mean of the image is zero and the standard deviation is one. Now, the ResNet 101 model also expects the image to be in the BGR color space, not the red, green, blue, but the blue, green, red color space. And it expects the image to be in this uh, CHW format, the C meaning the color channels, the, H, the height, W means the width, the third dimension. So we do need to do a little bit of pre-processing to get the image into the right format. And if you're watching the rest of my deep learning with PyTorch series, you see that we need to convert the image to a tensor and we need to add a batch dimension to the tensor and we do all of this using the transform function. So let's remove this. Instead, what we do is we add a preprocess. So it's a preprocess, and we bring it in from transforms. And notice that this is called the weights. So it's going to look at what these weights are, and it's going to figure out the requirement for force, right? If I show you what preprocess looks like, you will see that it has a few dimensions. Crop size is 224, resize size is 232, and you see the mean, the standard deviation. Depending on the between weights that you load in, the transform is going to do different things, but it's going to do that automatically for you. So you save yourself a lot of time instead of having to manually go and uh, size it and change it and make it a tensor and stuff. Now we are ready to create our model. So let's go ahead and create our model. We say ResNet, this is our model, and this is really just ResNet 101. Now you could do that, but since we have the weights, what's the point of bringing the weights in if we're not going to uh, initialize them in the creation of our model now? So let's go ahead and do that. So the weights, we say that's referring to weights. So this weights is referring to this one that we just loaded in. So instead of having to train our own, we're just going to make use of what is really provided to us, the pre-trained model, right? If you want to, you could also print out the ResNet. Uh, I'm going to do it in a different cell because it's going to print out a lot of output and I'm going to delay that right away. So ResNet. So you will see this is the convolution 2D network. You see the dimensions, 3, 64, and then the kernel size. These are all different parameters that I can tune later on. But because this is a pre-trained network, it already does the tuning and these are the kind of the parameters that are selected. And this ResNet architecture, if you try to import a different ResNet architecture, you will see different uh, configurations, different setups. But then th there is the sequential. This is really where all the magic is happening. So this is a convolved 2D. Now, if you don't know what a convolution is, I have a video on that. I have some intuition video on that. You should go and take a look at that video, watch that video, see how uh, this convolution happens. And then in the end, that's the value. Value is also something I covered in my previous video, uh, again, on the deep learning PyTorch series. You should go and take a look at that as well. But we don't need to um, look at all of this because really it's just a quick start, uh, get started guide, right? So I'm going to delete that. But what we do now is to bring in our images. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call it IMG. This is where I'm going to store my images. These are random images of Komodo and Orangutan that I found uh, on Google. And if you just type Komodo or Orangutan and just get the first or second image, um, you should be fine. Now let's go ahead and bring in PIL. So from PIL, that's Python Imaging Library. Let's import image. And then we want to just read that image in. So we're going to say image, uh, image.open. This is actually really simple. This is, uh, you know, if you want to learn more about computer vision, go and watch my other videos. Uh, but I'm going to just bring it in. So what do I name it? I name it orangutan.jpg. So I'm going to say orangutan.jp. Let's just print out image just to see that my image is good. I don't have the copyrights to these images. This is what I found on the internet. Um, look at this cute guy. Now we did the pre-process here, right? We said go and figure out what we need to do in terms of pre-processing. And it figured that out. It says this is it, pre-process. So what do we do? We take this pre-process and we apply that to our image. So uh, sounds really simple, so let's go ahead and do that. Pre-process, apply that to image, and then we want to change the shape a bit. If I show you what it looks like now, 
right? It looks like 32424. What we really want is we want to take this and we want to change the shape a little bit so it looks like this. So we add a one in front and then 3, 224, 224. Three referring to the three color channels, the blue, green, red, and then the 224 and the 224 is the height and the width. So let's go ahead and just name it batch. And if you want to, you could just print the batch shape just to confirm to yourself that you're doing the right thing. This is what it requires. Now with PyTorch, some models use modules that have different training and evaluation behavior, such as when you do batch normalization. Now, because we want to run a model in evaluation mode, we want to say something like ResNet, that is our name of model, and we want to say Evolve. We put this into the evaluation mode to ensure that the modules is running in evaluation mode as opposed to running in training mode, because we're not doing any training, we're just trying to evaluate this image. We say, hey, take this pre-trained model with the pre-trained weights, right? This is the image, just evaluate that and tell us uh, what it looks like. So running this, put this model into the evaluation mode, let's run that. Okay, and once it's done, let's create our prediction. We still haven't really applied the model, we're just putting them into evaluation mode, but now to really apply the model, we just have to say ResNet, and we apply the model and say, this is the name of the batch. So this is really what we name it here, right, batch. And if you apply that, you're gonna get all of this tensor. But because we did the squeeze, so let's go ahead and do a squeeze. What we want is to apply a softmax there, get into some sort of probabilities, and we can now save this to a variable called prediction. You want to print the shape of that, you can just do that. So you 1,000 prediction, why? Because there's 1,000 different classes. So what do you want to do is you want to figure out what is the ID with the maximum probability. So you say argmax for that, right? This is something we covered before. So you can say something like the class ID that we have predicted, that we're predicting is out of these 1,000 different predictions, which one has the maximum probability? So you say argmax and um, let's actually see what it gets. It says class number 365 has the biggest probability. This, mind you, is a tensor. So how do we take tensor and convert that back to a Python numeric? Just a simple numeric, we just have to put item. So this is gonna convert the tensor, three, six, uh, tensor 365 to a simple uh, integer 365. So let's say item, now it's 365, that's good. And what we wanna do now is to say, predict the class of that. So we can say prediction, but what you want is number 365. Take that and again, I want to make sure that it's just a Python object and not a tensor. So we're going to put item again. Let's run that. Okay, this prediction is a 1000 length tensor and you're taking the 365 index of that tensor and the probability of that 0 0.74. So that is the highest probability. So the remaining 999 all have a non-zero probability somewhere close to maybe zero, but it's most likely this class. Right, so let's take a look at what that class is. We can go ahead and just say print. We add print statement, we set this class ID and we can add a score. Now the score is something we've done already. Just here, let's just assign that to a score. In here, we put score. Here, we could use the weights that are right up there. There is the rates. And in weights, there is the metadata. So we say meta and we find the categories. Now what do we do? We say take the 365, so 365. But really, we don't want to hard code that. We want to say class ID. That should print it out for you. And it's an orangutan. So class ID is orangutan. If you just think about all the different kind of uh, apes that are in there, right, let's take a quick look at all the different weights meta categories. So let's pick this. And I'm going to index maybe around 355 to 375. Now, again, this ResNet architecture it has been trained and he has 1,000 possible outputs. There's 1,000 different classes, right? We're only gonna take a fraction of that. We're gonna look at only the categories within this index bound of 355 to 375. Let's run that. Now there's a llama, there's a whistle, a mink, polecat, black-footed ferret, otter, skunk, badger, armadillo. And this is where things get a little bit harder to uh, distinguish because they would look similar. Even to a six-year-old boy, a six-year-old girl, um, it will look very similar. Not, it's not always easy to tell when it's an orangutan versus a gorilla versus a chimpanzee and gibbon and patas, baboon. But you could tell all of this, right? All of this would probably belong to uh, similar families uh, and they would look very similar. So in order, and, and so for it to be able to predict that this is a orangutan and not just any other apes and not a chimpanzee and not a gorilla and not any other apes and not a baboon and not a bonobo, that's, that's not bad, that's pretty good. And if you want to try another image, um, in the image itself, I have orangutan and I have the Komodo. So you could try the Komodo now. Go ahead now and say komodo.jpg. 
print that image. So this is a glorious looking Komodo, very handsome Komodo. And we're gonna pre-process the image. This is already set in evaluation mode, so we can skip that. We are gonna apply that. Again, we have 1,000 different predictions. Now let's run this. What do we get? We get Komodo Dragon with an 81% probability. So it's very sure because remember, this is 1,000 different output, right? So each of the classes, there is a small probability there. And out of all this 1,000, the Komodo Dragon class, right, that is the one with the 81% probability, saying that this is highly likely a Komodo Dragon. If you look at the image, it's quite clear it is a Komodo Dragon. But if you want to print the ID, you could just add the ID here, wrap them into bracket. I want to do that so that I could see this is 48, I could then maybe say something like 40 to 60, just to see what are the different animals around that. Now you see that there's the American uh, Chameleon, the Wigtail, the uh, Agama, Field Lizard, Alligator Lizard, Komodo Dragon, African Crocodile, American Alligator. But among all of this, right, some of them would look maybe similar to each other, maybe close to each other. It could make the distinction between whether it's a Field Lizard or Alligator Lizard. It could make the distinction between a American or Af African chameleon or American ones, right? So it's pretty good. So that is the process of taking a model from Torch Vision straight out of the box with no tuning and just importing the weights to the model. As a recap, the weights are usually trained by making forward passes and backward passes through the network, each time updating its small steps such that the loss is minimized. Now in our case here, the weights have been trained by a team of researchers on a large data set and then they are made available for you to use. So we are said to be using a pre-trained model. We then pass it some images and it will return a prediction for each image. Now, because it is a tensor of size 1000, it is a tensor containing 1000 probabilities and we can use the argmax function to get the index of the maximum probability. And then we'll proceed to use our f-string to print the result and the class name along with the probability. So that's a really quick intro to using a pre-trained model in Touch Vision and I hope it shows you how productive you can be with PyTorch Vision. We went from images to predictions in less than 10 lines of code and well under 10 minutes. So if you find Touch Vision interesting and you want to dive deeper, then you're welcome to subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing hour-long in-depth tutorials on PyTorch like our usual format. For now, I'll leave you to explore the Touch Vision documentation, try out the other models that are available, and all the concepts referenced here are explained in detail in my other beginner tutorials. I'll leave a link in the description to each one of them. I'll see you in the next video.